Okay, so this is uh, a problem uh, from from Holt, number 35 from Holt. And uh, it's uh, like a football question here. So a player must kick a football from a point 36 meters from the goal. So that means Right, there's like a, there's our goal. All right, um, and uh, the crossbar is three and a half, three point oh five meters high, and the ball leaves the ground at a speed of twenty meters a second at an angle of fifty three degrees to the horizontal. Um, uh, so, it's something like that, uh, and that is the initial. And that is theta. And this is some height. I'm going to call it H. I mean, you can call it delta Y if you want, but I'm going to call it, it's like a, that's some specific height H. And I'm going to go ahead and say that is some range like that. And we know some of these values, right? We know that. Um, we know that the range there is 36 meters and the crossbar has a height of 3.05 meters. And we know that the initial speed is 20.0 meters a second. And the angle theta is 53 degrees. So uh, the first question is asking by how much does the ball clear or fall short of clearing the crossbar? So um, we know it's gonna follow some sort of uh, an arc like this. And, but we don't know, right? We, what we don't know is does it follow a path like that where it misses the crossbar by a certain amount like that or, uh, you know, does it follow a path that's kind of like this? Um, uh, a path that's like this, let's say, where uh, where it goes like that. And in that case, this would be, it would clear the crossbar by a certain amount. Right, and we just don't know exactly what path it follows, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, so um, like all physics problems, there's many different ways we could go about this. Um, and there are ways that are easier and ways that are harder. Um, I'm gonna go through um, maybe sort of a multi-step process that might be the sort of the most uh, likely one that you would think of. Um, and then I'll show you maybe a shorter way around this problem. Um, so uh, what we want to know is, what we really want to know is where does this, uh, what is delta y when it gets to r, right? That's, that's really what we want to know. So, um, right, we want to know delta y and what is delta Y? Well, that is VY initial T um, minus one half G T squared. So I'm gonna assume that this is positive and that is positive. We're using conventional 
coordinates here. Um, it might have been easier if we switched it around, but that's how I'm going to set it up um, for this example here. And so if we knew the time at which it got to this point here, and we know the initial y velocity, we could figure out what that height is. But we could figure out what delta y of the ball is, and then all we have to do is compare it to the height of the crossbar. Um, notice that it was really important to pick good labels here, right? H here is the height of the crossbar, and I'm leaving delta y. Delta y is the height of the ball when it passes through the point where the crossbar is. Uh, where the crossbar is located uh, horizontally. So you just got to realize that there are two different heights, right, that we're talking about. There's the height of the crossbar and the height of the ball. And that's what we're trying to compare. This delta y right here, this is the height of the ball. So um, there's another equation you could potentially use. You could use vy squared minus vy initial squared equals two negative g delta y. So you could use that as well, to, and you could solve for delta y, but you would need to know this value vy. You absolutely could find that out, but uh, um, that would be a step. Uh, you might say, well, here we don't know what the time is. That's also tricky. So there's, there's different ways to do this, all right? But the, the easiest thing I would say is you know what the range is and you know what V naught is. So I would say, look at delta X, right? Delta X equals VX initial T. So we could solve for this T, right? We could say T equals delta X over VX initial. And hopefully you know that is delta X over V naught cosine theta. Um, and uh, if you don't understand why Vx naught is V naught cosine theta, review your right triangle trigonometry. The cosine picks out the horizontal piece. And we know delta x, that is that range, right? V naught cos theta. So that is 36 meters over 20 meters a second times the cosine of cosine of 53 degrees. And here's actually a kind of a cool little tip. Um, the cosine of 53 degrees, I am pretty sure, is three fifths. Um, I'm going to check that real quick here on my calculator, but I'm almost, I'm pretty sure it's, that's what it is. It might be 53.1 degrees, actually, that has three fifths. But um, cosine of 53 is just a little over 0.6. Um, so you could do that, you know, on your calculator, but it's, this is a good one, just, this is a good one to sort of know, right, that if you have, I'm going to sort of do it down here off to the side in another color.
if this is a 53 degree angle, 53 degree angle is the angle of a three, four, five right triangle. So the cosine of 53 degrees is three fifths. Um, this is, it's actually 53.1 degrees technically, um, uh, but this is pretty close. So I'm just gonna say that's three fifths. Um, and by the way, I said that this is 20. So 20 is, that's just four times this. So um, four, times five, that's, you know, four times four, or four times three. So what is this time? This time is 36 meters over 20 meters per second times the cosine of 53 is three fifths meters cancel. And that is gonna be units of seconds. And the 20 cancels with the five to make four. And three cancels with 36 to make 12. And then 12 cancels with four to make three. So this is three seconds. Um, in fact, if we, we should be, we could say it's 3.00 seconds here. Um, if you did this on a calculator, you might get something slightly different because cosine of 53 degrees is not actually exactly three fifths. It's going to be something that is, um, uh, I guess, probably slightly bigger than three fifths, but but very 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 modestly different. Yeah, it'd be like 0.601 instead of 0.6. So um, so you get something slightly slightly different, right? Um, so uh, I'm just trying to think real quick about what these would be. That'd be 36 over 12 is three. Yeah, okay. So 3.0 seconds. So we know it takes three seconds to get to where the crossbar is. And now that we know this time, right? We can plug that time in up here and calculate delta y. We can also, of course, always just use these, this equation right here. We can also sub in that, you know, for time. Um, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So if you did that, right, then we have what delta y equals now v y naught, that is v naught sine theta, make sure to review your trig if you don't understand that, v naught sine theta times t minus one half g t squared. And we basically, we know all those things, right? So v naught was 20 meters a second times sine theta, sine of 53 is four fifths. minus one half of 9.8 meters a second squared times, uh, oh, when we, shoot, I forgot to, that's why it's important to check your units always, right? This is V naught T, V naught sine theta, that was V naught, that was sine theta, we have to include the t, three seconds minus one half times 9.8 meters per second squared 
times three seconds squared. And now we're just doing some calculations here. And you see there the seconds cancel. And this is uh, 20 divided by five, that is four. So we've got four times four times three. So that is uh, four times three is 12 times four is that is 48 meters minus one half of 9.8, that is 4.9 meters per second squared times nine seconds squared. Second squareds cancel and we're left with just meters. So that is 48 meters minus 4.9 times nine. So you just gotta do that on a calculator. 4.9 times 9 is 44.1 meters. And so 48 meters, 48 minus 44.1 is 3.9. So delta Y is 3.9 meters. Delta Y equals 3.9 meters. And what we wanna do is compare that to 3.05 meters, which is the height of the crossbar. And 3.9 is greater than 3.05. So Delta Y is greater than H, which means it clears it, All right? Uh, um, so 3.9 minus 3.05 equals... Zero point eight five. Uh, they should all have meters on them, right? So, um, so by how much does the ball clear or fall short? It clears by zero point eight five meters, right? It's height, it's de delta Y is greater than H and it, it clears it by 0.85 meters. Um, so then it says, does the ball approach the crossbar while still rising or while falling? Um, actually, uh, before we do that real quick, so I was gonna show you sort of a one-step method. So what did we do here? We solve for time in the horizontal direction, and then we plugged it into delta y to solve for the vertical position. Um, but we have a, a technique that allows us to do that in one step, and it's called the trajectory equation. And that's basically what we did in two steps. Remember, the trajectory equation was derived by isolating t and delta x, and then plugging that t into delta y. So you eliminate T and substitute in delta X uh, or just X. So um, instead, right, we could have used Y equals Y naught plus tangent theta times X minus one half G over V naught squared cos squared theta x squared. That's the trajectory equation. So we know what x is. x is r. We could have plugged in this value for r right there into x. And we know theta. 
and we know V naught. So there's a one step equation. What's Y naught? Well, we started at the ground, Y naught is zero. So we can find Y in one step right here. So if you knew this trajectory equation, you wouldn't have had to go through this whole process. So you would have just, if you did that, you would just get Y is 3.9 meters like we did here. You would get that same result and then you would follow the same process right here. Okay, so uh, we see that there's you know, multiple ways to skin a bird, as they say. Um, does the ball approach the crossbar while still rising or still falling? So what we want to know is um, uh, what's the peak? Is the peak here um, going to be more or less than this 3.9 meters? And, and when did it hit the peak? Um, so again, there's many different ways to figure this out. Um, what would one way to figure out what the peak is? Well, a way to figure out what the peak would be to use this equation, right? Um, so I'm gonna go to another page. Um, we could use, right? Vy squared minus Vy initial squared equals two, uh, and I'm gonna say negative G, delta y, because uh, we're calling up positive, so down is negative. So when it's at the peak, at the peak, vy would be zero, right? So um, if we did that, right, this would be uh, negative V naught sine theta, each of these would be squared equals negative two G delta Y. And I'll put a little P in there for the peak, delta Y of the peak, um, boom, boom. And we can say delta Y of the peak is V naught squared sine squared theta over two G, which turns out to be 20 meters a second squared times sine of theta. We said that was the sine was four fifths, right? So four fifths squared over two times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is, um, again, you can do your, you could do this on a calculator, but uh, right, it's 20 times four fifths. And the whole thing squared. So um, divided by two times 9.8 meters a second squared. Um, so 20 divided by five, that is four. So we've got four squared squared. Um, so uh, divided by two, so that would be um, four to the fourth um, over 19.6 meters a second squared. Um, this is, oops, this was meters per second, right? Meters per second. So meters cancel and a seconds cancels. So we've got four, to the fourth divided by 19.6. And that comes out to be 13.06. All right, 13.06 uh, meters. That's the peak. Okay, 
So we know this is the peak. What we want to know is when does it get to that peak? So that's important because we have to know, does it hit that peak before or after it gets to the crossbar? So what we can then do is we could say, okay, V equals V naught plus A T, right? So that's V Y equals V Y initial minus G T. So at the peak, Vy is zero. A equals V naught sine theta minus G T, and I'll call it TP for T peak. Um, so um, G T peak equals V naught sine theta. So T of the peak equals V naught sine theta over G. So V naught was 20 meters a second times the sine of theta was four fifths over 9.8 meters per second squared. And Meters cancel, a seconds cancels. 20 divided by five, that was four. So we've got four times four over 9.8. That is 16 over 9.8 seconds. So That is 1.63 seconds. So it gets to its peak, 13.06 meters at 1.63 seconds. So let's go back here and think, we saw that it got to the crossbar at three seconds. So it's the peak here was a great deal higher, 13.06 meters. That is a lot higher than 3.9 meters. And it gets to that peak at 1.63 seconds, which is before three seconds. So that means when it is approaching the crossbar, it has already crossed the peak. The peak was somewhere like back here, which means if it's crossing the crossbar post peak, it means it was falling. So uh, that's very it. Um, uh, like, follow, and subscribe for more hot physics tips.